Jeevachon agus Falta Roiv Gadi Law a Kher. Greetings, Every Nation family, and welcome to day four of our week of prayer, fasting, and consecration. My name is Aoife. I am the campus missionary here in Dublin, Ireland, and I'm also the campus director for Every Nation Europe. Day four, well done. How are you doing? I hope that you have been having amazing times with the Lord, getting in his word, enjoying his presence, hearing from him. But maybe honestly, you've gotten to this point and you're just hangry or frustrated and you feel like God has gone on silent and you're hearing nothing. I want to encourage you, keep going. God is not finished with us yet and there is more to come. And today we are looking at the miracle of God's guidance. And let me begin with this story. A couple of months ago, this memory came up on my Facebook feed. It was a letter written from a landlord to his tenant saying, I just want to thank you guys for being such great tenants. You've always paid the rent on time. And I know this has been a tough year, so I'm, we're going to waive the rent for December. We can pick it up again in January. And I remember reading this letter the first time I saw it and thinking, wow, I hope one day I get to have a landlord just like that. But you know what? When it came up in my Facebook memories, I realized that my thinking had shifted. And instead of thinking, wow, I want to have a great landlord like that, I thought, I want to be a great landlord like that. I want to be part of someone else's miracle story. And today we're looking in Acts chapter 8 at how God's guidance can lead to his kingdom and his purposes being accomplished. So we're jump in to verse 26. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, rise and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert place. And he rose and went. I love that. God gave specific guidance and instruction and Philip just went. He didn't go to the Lord and say, sorry, Lord, I have a 10 o'clock appointment with Peter. I'll get there after lunch. It simply says he rose and went. And there was an Ethiopian, a eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of all her treasure. Influential guy, this one. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning, seated in his chariot, and he was reading the prophet Isaiah. And the spirit said to Philip, go over and join this chariot. I love it. God had started with giving Philip a more general instruction, go to this area. But then as Philip obeyed, he got more specific. Go to this chariot, not that one, not that guy, not that girl on the horse, go to this one. And he starts a salt conversation. He starts the conversation, asks great questions, listens well, and then tells the story. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and asked, do you understand what you are reading? And he said, how can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Now the passage of scripture that he was reading was this, like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter and like a lamb before its shearer is silent. So he opens not his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. And the eunuch said to Philip, about whom, I ask you, does the prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth and beginning with this scripture, he told him the good news about Jesus. And as they were going along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, see, here is water. What prevents me from being baptized? And he commanded the chariot to stop. They both went down into the water, Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord carried Philip away and the eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. I don't know if these two men got to meet each other again on this side of heaven, but because of Philip's obedience to God's guidance, he got to be part of this man's salvation story, ultimately changing the destiny of his life. Let's pray. Father, thank you that you still speak to us. You give us clear guidance. You give us clear instruction. And Lord, I, I pray for everyone who is having trouble hearing you this week, Lord God, that you would help them fine tune into the voice of your Holy Spirit. I pray that as they read scriptures this week, the words would come alive and jump off the page at them. 
But Father, I pray not only that we would hear from you, but that we would also have the boldness to obey you immediately so that we can be part of someone else's miracle story, whether salvation, healing, or whatever it is that you want to accomplish and through us for the glory of your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.